Good afternoon, everyone. Gonna take a couple of seconds to allow everyone to come in, starting to see the number grow. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Lauren Simpson and I am uh, with the SBDC. I am joined today by my colleague, Mike DiDonato. Hello, sir. Hi, good <laughs> to see everybody. Oh, we have a lot of people coming. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. Hope everyone's doing well. It keeps growing and growing. Let me go ahead and I will do a quick intro and then um, Mike, you can jump into the content for today. So let me share my screen. Why are you doing that? I do prefer an interactive session. So Lauren has the opportunity to unmute you if you want to ask a question. I work Personally, I work better when it's interactive. All right. You heard them interact with us, please. All right, let me quickly do this intro. My name is Lauren Simpson. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. I am with the SBDC or the Small Business Development Center. We're a national program with over a thousand locations across the country offering no cost services to local small businesses. Now our services are at no cost to you because your tax dollars have already taken care of our fees. For the Los Angeles Network, we represent the Los Angeles, Santa Barbara, and Ventura counties, and you can see our center locations uh, right in front of you on the map. You can see that there is a location near Santa Clarita and Camarillo, uh, all the way out in Laverne, Pasadena, down to Long Beach. Those centers the SBDC, we offer no cost business advising. And so you're able to meet one-on-one -on -one via Zoom or phone with one of our business experts or business advisors. And so you're able to meet uh, on topics related to marketing, uh, business planning, uh, finance and taxes. Uh, honestly, you name it, we've got it. And then we also offer a comprehensive workshop. So there are virtual trainings, much like the training you have joined today. And Mike has a really great topic today, so I'm excited for you. <laughs> uh, so just know that we're here to help you. Please contact us today. You can go to 866-58-7232, or you can go online, smallbizla.org forward slash new client. For those of you who have uh, reached us outside of the Los Angeles network, so outside of the Los Angeles, Santa Barbara, and Ventura counties, you can go to americasbdc.org forward slash find your SBDC. Quick housekeeping as I stop my screen share, please be sure to put all questions in, uh, into the Q&A. Please make sure those questions are on topic. So we want to keep the, the questions on topic, and then we want to be sure they go into the Q&A. Inside the chat, we'll be providing any sort of, uh, well, that's a place for you all to either uh, speak to each other related to the content, or uh, we'll be sharing uh, links and items for you as well. Uh, note that these sessions are recorded and you are able to go to our YouTube playlist to review past shows. So I will put that up in just a second. Um, and like Mike said, uh, he wants this session to be interactive. So there is nearly 40 of you. If you could just please request, you know, just raise your hand and then I can uh, mute you. Yep, and I can allow you to talk. So again, if you raise your hand and we allow you to talk, just keep the content on topic and uh, Mike will definitely address. Oh, uh, uh, yes, sorry, I just saw a question. And Mike will address uh, your question. Now in the chat, I see someone asked about the YouTube. I'm gonna put the link inside of the chat so you'll be able to click it and then you can go directly to our YouTube channel. And that is it for me, Mike. I'm handing it over to you. Thank you. Appreciate that. So today's talk is about access to capital, funding. Get that a lot. How can I fund my business? And I'm going to be going through that topic. Please allow me to share my screen. We're going to be talking about a lot of different ways to fund your business. This presentation was put together by my colleague, Larry Johnson, who's an expert in finance. He and I work closely together. Uh, we work out of multiple SBDCs. This particular presentation was put together for the Alpha Middle College SBDC. Uh, as Lauren said, we have multiple centers scattered throughout the country, more than a thousand centers. So today's topics, 
common ways to fund a business. Microfinance and alternative lending, which I think is terrific. SBA loans, we do a lot of work with SBA loans. We have experts at all the centers that can help you with SBA loans. Great way to business. Then look at irreserve evaluation, how to apply, and as always, be happy to take questions. So I'm going to ask actually one question right now. You put it in the chat room if you have already received an SBA loan aside from an EIDL loan or a PPP loan, a 7A loan or a 504 loan. So common ways to fund a business through your own savings called bootstrapping or cash flow, credit cards, which I don't typically recommend. Friends and family is where the vast majority of businesses start with. Potential investors, but investors aren't really gonna come into a startup or early stage company. Banks, lending institutions, and alternative lenders. Something like 80% of small businesses are start through your own resources and families and friends. So that's where you always go to first. Are alternative low programs aside from banks when they say no? Something called microfinance. Microfinance means small loan companies to early stage companies or startups to help them just get going aside from friends and family. Okay. There are certain let's say characteristics that lenders always want to look at. They want to look at C's, they're called C's, character, capacity, and capital. And we'll discuss these a little bit more, right? Character basically looks at your personal background, your credit history, to see if you've been a good citizen in paying your debts. Capacity, how much can you actually borrow given your current income or your the collateral that you have that might support that income. And capital is, is collateral, such as real estate, savings, investment. That's what a traditional lender wants to look at, is these Cs. There's also something called conditions. So what is microfinance? There's a gentleman in India named Mohammed Yunus. He's known as the banker to the poor. He went out to villages. I remember, we, reading about this and seeing about this in the 70s when I was in school. He went to these small villages where there were groups of women making handcrafted goods. And he asked these groups of women, what do they need to help grow their business? And they say, we just need little loans, small loans to help grow our business. So he gave small loans, might've been $25 or $30 or $50 or $100 at the time. It turned out to be very successful. That's called microfinancing. And that bank, Grameen Bank is still around. They still do that. And they loan to cohorts of women, that's before, and there's actually a branch here in Los Angeles. So that's where microfinancing started. Now, there's a number of micro lenders out there in the community. We work with all of them. The Opportunity Fund, PACE, the Jewish Free Loan Association, Kiva, CDC Small Business Finance, Valley Economic Development Center, and Axiom. These are all wonderful organizations that can help you obtain a small loan, relatively small loan. The Jewish Free Loan Association is very interesting because you don't have to have a good credit score. You can have co-signers, and those co-signers have to have good credit scores, and you get funding up to $36,000 for your business. Plus, they have all sorts of other loans aside from business loans. And they're a great group. You don't have to be Jewish to apply for them. They'll help anyone that's a nonprofit. The opportunity find you have to be in business for two years. And they don't just look at credit score. They look at the entire situation that you're facing. Pace, I work with them. They have, they're an SBA lender, plus they have micro loans. We do a lot of work with CDC Small Business Finance. Community Development Financial Institutes, in, uh, institutions are scattered throughout the country to help with what's referred to as SBA 504 loans. So micro lender crowdfunding. 
Uh, Lauren, I have to ask a question. Have you ever heard of Kiva? You have? I have, yes. Mm -hmm. Do you know of anyone who has participated in Kiva, either lending or has gone out and get try to get funding through Kiva? I do not, no. Okay. I think so I ever see like marketing from them. Right. Wonderful organization. They've taken micro lending to another level. They are throughout the globe. Uh, they work with new, in numerous countries, 82 countries. You can get a loan up to $15,000, no interest. It's one form of crowdfunding, and we have a separate workshop on crowdfunding. The contributor can lend as little, as little as $25. If you get enough people lending you $25, you can get up to $15,000. They have a loan repayment rate repayment rate of 97%, almost 97%. It's amazing. Lenders would love to have that repayment rate. Over $1.8 million have made a loan on Kiva. This is a great organization. Why would people do it? It's to help others. That's why people do it, to help grow those businesses which have been traditionally shut out from access to capital. And still you get paid back. So it's a great way to go. Additionally, there are teams on Kiva and the, there's countries, Kiva US, Kiva Zimbabwe, et cetera. So you wanna to go to the Kiva US site, there are teams in those sites that will match and help push to that goal. It doesn't have to be 15,000. It can be anywhere in between zero and $15,000. There is a process for the application. You need a business plan. We can help you with this. Now, why apply for small business loan as opposed to taking in an investor? If you can get an investor, you maintain control over your business. The lenders are not gonna tell you how to run your business. They're not entitled to the profits. The obligation to lenders to repay the loan and provide the appropriate financial reports that they, they request. And you get to grow the relationship with the lender because as you grow, you're gonna need more and more capital. Thus, it does make sense to get engaged with a traditional lender at some point during your business life. Disadvantages of small business loans? Well, you gotta pay it back. It is a loan on a consistent basis. You can't be late or else you can run into issues in terms of lateness of payments and then interest and penalties. Uh, you often need collateral to secure a loan. Now, with regards to JFLA, the collateral is provided by the co-signers. With one co-signer, I think you can get up to $7,500. With two co-signers, up to $36,000. With Kiva, you don't need to secure the loan. You don't need collateral. If you go the crowdfunding route through, let's say, Indiegogo, Kickstarter, you basically those are selling products. Selling products. There is no collateral necessary. If you do the crowd raises through start engine, we fund it. That's a whole different bargain. There's a whole set of rules associated with crowd raises. There might be a requirement for you to put money in to the business. So the SBA loans, depending on the type of loan, uh, you're required to put in at least 10%, sometimes 20%, depends on the type of loan you get. And personal guarantees by all owners are required. With the SBA, it's all owners that have ownership interests of 20% or more. We have a hurricane in Florida right now. We've got an impact of things. The SBA will spend and offer disaster loans. And those loans will be issued directly to those businesses impacted by that horrible event. That is the only time where the SBA will loan directly. Traditionally, they loan through lenders or CDCs like small business finance because they have approved lending networks throughout the country. And we have connections to those lending networks throughout the country. So the SBA is a US agency. 
It was created in 1953 under the Small Business Act signed by President Eisenhower. And the mission is economic development. And we are funded by a grant from the SBA. The SBDC started in 1975 and it grew and grew and grew to the point where we're national with over a thousand centers. So the SBA offers a guarantee to the lenders to enable the borrower to access capital. As I mentioned, the SBA is not a direct lender except in the emergency situations. And the SBA also funds organizations, score those are retired executives, women business centers, veterans business centers. They have a lender match. You can go to the sba.gov site and find a letter lender and to match to your particular need and location. And as I mentioned, they have the disaster loans. They also provide certifications. Now, that's going to be a separate presentation. We're not going to go over certifications today. But if you get certified, there's 11 different certifications. Minority of business, women-owned business, veteran-owned business, small disadvantaged business, small disadvantaged women-owned business, et cetera. There's a whole host of them. If you get certified through the SBA, that gives you an advantage in securing contracts, for example, gives you preferences. And uh, uh, Lauren, you asked me what other content I have. I think that's one of the uh, content items I'm going to create on certifications or present. So an SBA loan is a business loan. It's not a grant. It's not a personal loan, although your personal credit score is looked at and they are guaranteed. The amount guaranteed depends on upon the loan. So the SBA will, SBA will guarantee the loan up to like 85% of the loan. Thus, lenders are more likely to provide you the loan. It's to provide financing to those who are credit worthy. You have to be a small business and the SBA has specific rules as to what constitutes a small business. Small business for the most part is businesses with under 500 employees. Some industries, there's differences in the specific rules regarding the industries, and I'm not going to go through all that detail here. So the benefits, small businesses receive financing for the purchase of real estate or for the purchase of equipment, fixed assets, you can get or to purchase a business, you can get up to 90% financing for those transactions through an SBA 504 loan. You put up 10%, the SBA puts up 40%, and the bank puts up the rest. It is full amortization, which means there's no balloon payment at the end. You're just paying it off just like you're paying it for kind of long, month over month over month. There's certainly qualifying forms you have to fill out to get this loan. And it's usually done through, like I said, a CDC. Most likely, if you come to us, would go through CDC Small Business Finance or through PACE. So to be eligible for a loan, you must be in operation, okay? And it's not for a nonprofit. It has to be for a for-profit business located in the United States, which includes Puerto Rico, et cetera. Be small, like I mentioned, typically under 500 employees. And you have to demonstrate a need for the desired credit. Certain activities are not allowed for SBA loans. Life insurance companies cannot get SBA loans. If you're a fintech company, you, can, you can't get an SBA loan. If you're some sort of lending company, you can't get an SBA loan. Obviously, they're not going to fund any Ill illegal activities, which includes, by the way, cannabis. We get a lot of calls for people who want to sell cannabis or cannabis-related uh, products. And unfortunately, we cannot support those companies because it's still against federal law. No gambling. Anyone involved in any gambling act business activities? You can't get an SBA loan for that. No products of a sexual na nature, no private clubs activity, and no uh, business that is involved in primarily teaching religion. We, we have to stay away from that. So these rules apply for SBDCs as well and all the other like women's business centers, veterans, veterans business centers, SCORE, all these organizations cannot support 
businesses involved in these activities. So the SBA provides a loan guarantee backed up by the US government. There are two different SBA loan programs. Within those programs is multiple loan products. So there's something called a 7A loan, has a maximum loan amount up to $5 million. You can use it to buy machine and equipment. Typically, most people get a 7A loan for working capital to fund inventory, refinance existing debt, leasehold improvements. But when it comes to leasehold improvements and purchasing machine and equipment, because the requirement is only 10% down, most people would go with a 504 loan, not a 7A loan. The 7A loan has to be 20% down. Um, it says purchase construction real estate. Again, I would go with a 504 loan. Not a Based on the proceeds and the ability to repay it, up to 10 years for working capital, seven to 10 years for machinery and equipment, 25 years for real estate, maximum maturity. And let's say I have a mix, I'm buying some equipment and I'm buying some real estate. Well, the term is going to be a rated average if there's multiple purposes. So I want to start, stop there right now, Lauren, and take any questions. Do we have any? Most no? of the questions are related to the deck, Mike. Um, and we can provide that um, after the session. Otherwise, people can you know, look at that YouTube link that we've shared in the chat. Uh, if you have questions, you can either type them into the Q&A or like Mike mentioned, you can go ahead and raise your hand, right, Mike? And we can call on them. And yeah. if they want to talk, they can talk. Yeah, sure. Be happy to do that. Uh, so let me continue on for here. So the interest rates, remember the SBA is lending to a lender. So there's gonna be a negotiation between the lender and the borrower, but it's usually based upon prime plus a spread. Now, at the time this presentation was created, the, it was 5.25%. Interest rates have now been increased and they're gonna to continue to increase. So you have to stay on top of the, what the prime rate is, but it's gonna be prime plus a, plus a spread. For less than a seven year term, if it's $50,000 or less, it's prime plus two and a quarter. For a seven year term more, seven year term or more, it's prime plus two and three quarters. And then the rates are slightly higher for loans above 50,000. So what is a CDC? What is a certified development company? They are certified by the SBA to administer, to administer 504 loans, SBA 504 loans primarily used for commercial real estate. So you wanna go buy your building uh, for your business activity. CDCs are private nonprofits. All they do is the dealing with loans and they are nonprofits. And there's 260 plus CDCs in the country. There's something called the Community Advantage Loan offered through one of the CDCs that we work with closely called CDC Small Business Finance. It's offered throughout California, Arizona, and Nevada. And the loan range is between $50,000 and $250,000. And it can be used by startups, existing businesses, expansions, and business acquisitions. It's going to be prime plus six or up to six. And it's term is seven to 10 years. So there's all different types of loan uh, products out there offered through the SBA uh, organization. So what will a lender look at? They're gonna look at these C's. What's your credit? Remember your credit is key. What's the cash flow that's gonna be generated by the business? What's the collateral offered to support the loan? What's the capital that you are putting in uh, for this new venture? All right. And what are the conditions of the industry? For example, during the height of the pandemic in 2020, Low, no lenders were lending to restaurants because the conditions were bad for restaurants. Back in 2010, 2011, 2009, 10, 11, no lenders were lending to construction companies. As a matter of fact, Opportunity Fund still refuses to lend to anyone involved in construction. So it depends on the conditions. If you're buying a building, 
if the building is in a bad area, subject to flood, you may not get a loan for that particular building. So the, the conditions of the industry, the conditions of the business itself, your personal conditions, um, that's what they want to look at. By the way, I spoke to an SBA loan expert, he said the most important aspect of what you just saw in that screen on that slide is conditions. I thought it'd be credit, but no, it's conditions. So anyone that owns 20% or more ownership in the business, you must provide your credit reports. You're gonna be looked at. And that includes spouses of business owners, as well as any co-signers. And the credit score is gonna reflect your payment history, the amount of your revolving debt, which is the credit cards, the length of your credit history, and the types of credit revolving versus installment debt. And there is something called the annualcreditreport.com and credit.org where you can go ahead and get your credit reports. No loan's gonna go through without the credit reports and the credit check through the SBA program and the traditional lender. Cash flow, so how much profit is being generated by the business on your recent tax returns? What's the cash flow, the income on your interim financials? And what's your projected income for new business? So I have somebody who's um, buying a business, but the question is, and he's buying new equipment, what are they going to, how much more income would that new equipment generate for that business? That's, we have to put together that question. The SBA and the bank, the lender will also look at your personal income from other sources. So do you have other employment? Do you have other businesses? Is there some income coming in from a spouse? Do you have a pension coming in of some sort? All the income is going to be looked at that's coming into you through your business or to yourself or to your household. Collateral. Every lender, traditional lender, bank, wants to be sure that you have collateral in case you can't pay a loan, including the SBA. So although the SBA is guaranteeing the loan being offered by the lender, the SBA doesn't want to be left hanging with the bag. So the SBA wants to be sure that you have sufficient collateral to support the loan outside of your business like real estate. Common forms of collateral include the personal residence. Business assets, all inventory and equipment owned by the business and personal assets like stocks, bonds, vehicles. If you have a collection of vehicles, that's great. Now, what the SBA will do is they'll put a lien on the business assets and they'll file a lien against your personal assets. So long as you paid off, you're good. And this is what any lender would do. So what capital are you gonna be putting into this business or in for this project? Like you're gonna be buying a piece of equipment. I have a client buying $1.2 million piece of equipment. By the way, it's not just the price of the equipment that you can fund. It's the shipping, it's the installation, it's the labor to, and the taxes required for that piece of equipment. $1.2 million just to buy it. So $200,000 and then some for all the other expenses. So it's somewhere around 1415. The SBA will fund that through a 504 loan. So long as the owner puts in at least 10% against that purchase. So the, the owner would have to put in $140,000. A bank would normally require to put in 20%. So the SBA will want to look at your savings, look at, see if you have any equity in your home, any partner contributions, any money coming in from friends and family. If it's a startup and you, you want to start a restaurant, you have to put in 20%. So let's say it's $100,000 to start your restaurant, which is low. You need to put at least 20% in. If you're a client company, I have many clients acquiring businesses. And I say, go for an SBA, 504 loan. You like to put up 10%. I got one right now. It's a million dollar deal. And he's buying a business in Texas. I said, go with an SBA loan. Additionally, a 
carry back by the seller who's selling that business can serve as that 10% injection. So he's doing a no cash transaction on a million dollar deal because the, the seller is carrying back a note. What experience do business owners and operators have in your industry? That's important. If you have no experience in the industry and you're trying to break into an industry, that's going to be a problem. So you have to bring in someone to help you within that industry. Yeah, this is what it's saying. If you don't have direct experience, who are you going to bring in to help you? Because we know that if you don't have direct experience in the industry, you're more likely to fail. And what are the current economic conditions? Like I said, during COVID, many loans weren't being out, being given out because of the conditions that, that occurred uh, throughout the country. So here are some, like I said, some folks that help you out, aside from us, women's business centers, score centers, score chapters, et cetera. So how do you apply for a loan? You need to fill out forms. It's a personal financial statement, which details your assets and liabilities, your income, et cetera. And then there's loan application for the business, how you're going to use the funds, what the business plan is, what the projections are, tax returns, proof of There's a lot of documentation that's required here, but it's worth it depending upon your situation. And we can help you work through all these applications. It's one of the things we do. It's called loan packaging, and we're specialists in it. And so you can contact us, have a one-on-one -on -one session with any of our loan experts. And Lauren uh, has a list of loan experts at every center. Types, we can talk about types of small business loans, who offers the loans, how to prepare for a loan, what do you need to get approved? We can explain the loan process. We can explain the credit issues. We can, might be able to help massage the credit issues in some way. What do you do if you de get declined? Okay. And I'm involved in mergers and acquisitions, as are many of our other advisors. So we can help with that, including buying a franchise. So I'm going to stop the share there. Did we get anything else coming in yet? No one has any questions about what I just presented? Wow. I'm impressed. You've got 50 people on, so I <laughs> okay. they're either well, still trying to digest all the information or they're shy. All right. Well, let's continue on that. So what you see on the screen, and I'll try to make it bigger if you give me a second. This is the SBA loan chart, and I know it looks like it's too much information. I get that. It breaks down between 7A loans and 504 loans. And within the 7A loans and 504 loans, there's multiple loan products, okay? And what this is giving you is information about the maximum loan amount, the percentage guarantee, and the use of proceeds, and maturity, details concerning each loan product. And um, I'm going to provide this link to you so you can download it for yourself. Lauren, do you see the link at the top? If you look up SBA Loan Chart, you'll find it. Okay, Lauren, then you can put it in the chat room. So the most popular SBA loan is a 7A loan, all right? The maximum loan amount is $5 million. The guarantee offered by the SBA is up to 85% for loans at $150,000 or less, 75% for loans greater than $150,000, up to 3.75 million maximum guarantee, okay? How can you use a 7A loan? For expansion, for veneration, although you probably use a 504 for that. New construction, same thing, probably use a 504, purchase land or building, again, use a 504. Purchase equipment, fixtures. You wanna use this for working capital. Refinance debt, seasonal line of credits, the seasonality, right? Christmas is coming. People need to buy a lot of products, supply chain issues. You can have seasonal needs. Maturity and start a business. What's the maturity? It depends on your ability to repay. 
generally for working capital in your equipment, it's not to exceed the life of the equipment. Five to 10 years, real estate is 25 years. What's the interest rate? It depends on how much. So up to 25,000, less than seven years, that's four and a quarter, and so on and so forth. And each of you can just download this, look up SBA loan chart, you'll find it. There are fees to be paid, which are added into the loan amount because the lender needs to get paid, the SBA has to fund its uh, activities. So the fee is, if it's $150,000 or less for this loan, it's 2%. And the lenders may retain no more than 25% of this fee, and that's 3% at this level, 3.75%, so on, okay? So there are fees to be covered. Let me take that down. Give me one minute, please. And then the 7A small loans, up to $350,000. Most of our clients would be seeking these small loans, okay? And basically, it follows all the same thing, right? Same percent of guarantee, same use of proceeds, same maturity, same maximum interest rates, okay? Who qualifies, same as 7A, plus all loan applications will be credit scored by the SBA. If not an acceptable score, the loan can be submit, submitted via a full standard 7A, okay? And then there's something called an SBA express loan, and there's working capital. Cap lines and community advantage loan. What I'm telling you is because there's so many loan products out there that's gonna be helpful to you, it's gonna be hard for you to sort through all this while an expert. I'm suggesting to you that you come to us if you're interested in this, and we can help you sort through what's most appropriate for you. And we can help you get that loan. We help secure millions and millions and millions of dollars of loans for our clients every year. Now, here's the 504 program, okay? The 504 program will allow you, it's in the middle of the page, to buy real estate under the business, to buy another business and to expand your business through the acquisition of equipment or lease of improvements. So the CDCs that I mentioned before, CDC Small Business Finance and all their competitors will go ahead and work through the process to provide up to 40% of the lending. The lender puts up 50% and you have to put up 10% plus another 5% if it's a new business or if it's some sort of special use property. I mean, there's some specific rules here, okay? So what I'm telling you is this is one of the most popular programs out there for those seeking 504 loans. And then there's a refinance program as well. If you already have a loan, we, we can work through the SBA loan process to help refinance or rebalance those loans. And then there's non-7A microloans. These are loans through nonprofit lending organizations up to 50,000. And again, shortest term possible, not to exceed six years, working capital, machine equipment, fixtures, it's negotiable, et cetera. Et cetera. Um, Laura, did you get that link? We able to find it for this loan chart? I don't see it. Let me look one more time. I'll, I'll go, I, I have it. Oh, okay. I'm going to put it into the chat room. I suggest all of you download this chart because you may need it. You might want to refer to it. I'm trying to put it into the chat room. There we go. I put it in the chat room. So to apply for a loan, there are things you need to do. Um, but I see some questions in the Q&A. With 500 employees, how might that affect those with 10 employees as well? If you have 10 employees, I don't want to say the question, Leslie, but if you have 10 employees, these loans are for you. You can have a maximum of 500 employees in both industries, okay? If you have 600 employees, you can't apply for an SBA back loan for most industries. It depends on the industry. There's a question in the chat room. Please put the questions in the Q&A because then we have to, otherwise we'll be back and forth between the chat and Q&A. 
But Gail, I'll answer your question. Are SBA loans accepted for SARPs? Absolutely. No question about it. You come up with 20% to start up that business based upon your launch, uh, launch need, right? You have a great credit score. You have a business plan. You have projections. You do everything you're supposed to do for application. And you can certainly get an SBA back loan for a startup. Um, let me, I'm going to go back to share my screen. One minute. There's a follow up, Mike. Mm, what's that follow -up? In the chat. You said this follow up? Yeah. Uh, so the question related to SBA loans accepted for startups. The reason why is because I thought you must show profits in your business to be qualified. No, not true. The SBA through this program, a 7A program, will fund a startup, but you have to have experience in the field and prove it. You need to provide as a CV. You need to have capital, you have at least 20%. You need to have a business plan with projections, financial projections, which can be, they can't be outrageous, right? They have to be realistic. The best thing for you to do is to come see us. And you have to have a credit score that's gonna be acceptable. And it has to be in the business that the SBA is allowed to help fund. Before, earlier in the presentation, I talked about ineligible businesses. So no CBD, no cannabis, none of that stuff, okay? No insurance companies. The vast majority of clients that we do see would meet that right criteria for eligibility in terms of the types of industries we can support. Yeah, come see us. We can go ahead and help you out. And it'll be a 780 loan for a startup. Unless you're buying a building or buying equipment, in which case it most likely be a 504 one. Um, I'm going to share my screen. So to apply for an SBA back loan, you fill out forms. This is a government agency. What do they like? They like forms. A government agency like forms. So there's something called a personal financial statement. This is a 413. And then when you come look it up, it's available at the sba.gov website, form 413. You can look up personal financial statement or PFS, okay? And this is the most recent version because you can see that this is not scheduled to be reviewed again. As you go down here, there's instructions. This form gets submitted to the lender, okay? If it's a 7A loan, it'd be a bank. Most likely for a 504 loan, it'd be a CBC, that, like CBC Small Business Finance, or PACE. So the form is relatively simple to fill out. Basic information, right? Name, address, phone number, business type, okay? WOSB means Women Owned Small Business. That's what that stands for. And this is your personal balance sheet. They want to know how much cash you have in your hand. And you are raised. They want all this information. You've got cash to render life insurance policy, stocks, bonds, real estate. List it all down. Then list down all your liabilities. A student loan, put it in here, right? Credit cards, revolving accounts. Put it all in here, okay? Then you want to know your income, salaries. Uh, if you have income coming from a source, you can have rental income. Just put it all in here. Most people would not have contingent liabilities, okay? And if there's some other income coming in, such as alimony of child support, alimony of child support payments should not be disclosed in other income, unless it is desired to have such payments counted toward total income. But why not? I don't see any problem with that. You may not want to, but it's up to you. But if you have any other income coming in, aside from what's listed here, you put in the description. Then down below, who do you owe money to? Like if you have a student loan, list it down. 
If you have a car loan, we'll sit down, okay? If you have a mortgage, uh, you there's a separate item there for the mortgages. Now, stocks and bonds. If you have numerous stock holdings, uh, I know of a trust, uh, I'm a trustee for a trust, numerous, numerous stock holdings. I'm not gonna list every single item that we owe with that trust, that we have on that trust. So I just put down the name of the trust, the amount, and that's it, okay? Here's the real estate ish, you know, section. What type of real estate is it? What's the address? How much to purchase it? What's the cost? What's the present market value? This is where you list all the stuff associated with your real estate. By the way, there's enough room for three real estate holdings. If you have more than that, uh, you list, you put it as an additional piece of paper, okay? Any other personal property, such as, I don't know, gold. Maybe you have some gold bars or silver bars in, in the bank vault somewhere. Whatever you have, list it down. They want to know if you owe any unpaid taxes, whether that's the state, the federal government, whether it's city, county, you've got to put it down and any other liabilities. Now, there are some insurance policies that have a cash surrender value. If you have such a policy, it's, I think it's a whole life policy, put it down. Remember, you have to certify this. You're subject to criminal prosecution and people have been prosecuted even recently um, for false presentation of information to the SBA. So just make sure you list it to the best of your ability. And I'm sure everybody would, okay? So that's that form. Then there's another form. This form is a schedule of liabilities. So what we're talking about right now is the forms you fill out for you personally. Okay, you can also use this particular form for the business. If you're already in business, you have to provide a schedule of liabilities and you can use this form for that. Um, so your name, the date and the name of the creditor. Okay, if you have revolving debt, list it down here, all right? And now we have another form. This is a form 1919. All these forms are available at the SBA website, okay? This is where the SBA wants to check to be sure that you're a good citizen, okay? That you're not a felon. You want to know all this information, okay? Applicant business name, operating legal name, do you have a DBA? Are you gonna do a 401k rollover, okay? the amount of the loan requests, purpose of the loan, ownership of the applicant, owner's legal name, et cetera, okay? And we keep going down. Are there co-applicants? Have you ever defaulted on an SBA loan? You just answer these questions. It's a relatively simple form. You just have to do it. Have you ever filed for bankruptcy is number seven. Doesn't necessarily mean you'll be disqualified you, they want to know. So don't hide any information, okay? That's the point. So if you, I just gonna keep going down, this is more and more questions. That's you just mark them off, follow the instructions and then certify. All these loan documents would be submitted to the lender, not directly to the SBA. For a 504 loan, it would go to the CDC. For a 7A loan, we'd go to a particular lender. And the vast majority of banks have SBA loan officers. Most credit unions do not have business bank accounts and do not offer SBA loans. That is what I have on this topic. I'm happy to address any questions or any comments. Again, we want you to come see us so we can help you work through us because that was a lot of information presented in a relatively short period of time. By the way, to apply for the loan, you need three years of tax returns for your business, as well as for your personal tax returns. You will need a resume that explains your experience in the field, especially if this is a startup. You need a business plan and you need use of funds 
use of proceeds, uh, the historical financials for the business for the past three years plus interim, and that, those forms that I mentioned. It's a lot. And the process is not fast because it takes time to gather all that documentation. It takes time for us to do a document review. And it takes time for the lender to do a document review to come back with questions. If you're buying equipment or you're buying real estate, they'll have to do either a desktop appraisal to go out. They'll just do it on, you know, online and see what the value of the equipment is or then they actually go out and visit and take a look at that equipment or that facility. If you do a lease of improvement, like putting in shelving, they want to see the facility. Putting in new lighting, they want to see the facility. So it's not something that happens quickly. It happens over time, three to four months. Once the CDC or the lender actually has gone through all the documentation, it takes about six days, seven days for the SBA to approve the loan. Okay, and the loan will come into your business bank account. Uh, do we have any? I put the link. I put the SBA loan chart link into the chat room. Somebody's asking for it. It's there already. No other questions. Um, GB couldn't be with us today. He's in Hawaii and he was flying back, and his flight was delayed. And I think it was delayed because of the situation with the hurricane in Florida, which is a horrible situation. So I'm going to thank everybody for your participation today. And I'm hoping that GB will be back next week or else I have to create some new content. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Lauren. Come see us. We're here to help you. Bye. Yeah, we are. Thanks, Mike. Bye.